joining us harish upadhya on the broadcast harish a very good morning to you well yet another big day for india as we inch closer to the mission being launched mission aditya l1 right now what are the latest updates you're gathering from uh, the ground there well the countdown has started yesterday and uh, perhaps last few hours for isro to go for that launch uh, why is it slightly different than other launches well pslv has carried out uh, more than 50 odd launches before this but in this one this would be taking slightly more time uh, around 60 odd minutes to uh, get separated uh, from the payload and that's one aspect of it, of it. second uh, remember we've had observation of sun from ground ground based observations this is the first time that isro would be studying sun from space from the l1 point uh, why has isro chosen this point uh, two crucial reasons uh, remember there are five vantage points to observe sun uh, in the sun earth axis and l1 uh, which is roughly around 1.5 million kilometers from earth uh, has a unique uh, uh, aspect of having a equal gravitational force between sun and earth so it's easier to mount a satellite or a payload there that's one of the main reason and second uh, is that it gives a uninterrupted view of the sun uh, remember when you're talking about ground based observation the challenge is one uh, you can observe only from dawn to dusk second uh, there are dust dust particles in the earth atmosphere that in a way impacts how uh, the sun is studied uh, the parameters get distorted so this is a crucial aspect and uh, if you look at the payloads that are part of aditya l1 uh, it gives a edge over several other uh, solar missions uh, that have been launched that have uh, studied sun from l1 point uh, one it has a, a payload that looks at sun and clicks a photo every minute uh, more than 1440 photos that will come back every day uh, back to indian institute of astrophysics and isro that's one aspect second it has a polarimetry uh, that that uh, studies the magnetic field so what these two payloads essentially do is that uh, it in a way helps scientists to understand uh, the environment or uh, perhaps the situation that leads up to a coronal mass ejection that's one of the main uh, studying points of this uh, particular project uh, that has uh, actually garnered a lot of interest in the scientific community uh, because remember whether it's solar flares or uh, coronal mass injections have uh, a, a terrible impact on satellites whenever it happen the electronics of the satellites and also there have been instances when uh, there have been impact on the ground as well whether it's affecting power lines or uh, airport communication radio communication so this important study that will go on for more than 5 years uh, will give a little more of data for scientists on uh, what leads to uh, whether a CME or a solar flare. Right, Harish. Harish, another very important and quite an exciting aspect that the scientists have constantly, uh, you know, brought up in their conversations and whatever interviews we've had with them is the fact that how the study is going to impact stu the student community. It is going to provide them uh, with, a, with a higher uh, temperament to want to study the solar system. So how are we looking at that? What all information do we have about this as to how is it going to help the students uh, study more about the uh, sun, know more about the solar uh, system? Well, uh, just the fact that you will know a lot more about the sun, uh, a lot more which is new information itself becomes exciting for anyone. who wants to take up uh, space science remember uh, we do know about sunspots but uh, how those magnetic ma uh, magnetic fields change how do those 11 year cycles uh, change what are the situations leading up to those changes what is the impact uh, what is the impact of a cme that emerges uh, from a particular region of sun and uh, what is the impact on earth these are things that are still being spoken about there are theories but perhaps the data set that will come in over the next 5 years or so uh, will give a concrete idea one second uh, uh, this whole set of images that come in uh, will also add the visual element that excites the student community remember the kind of images we've already seen from chandrayaan 3 has excited a lot of people even people uh, who did not who did not have much knowledge about space science or uh, lunar missions they are excited looking at those images so it acts uh, definitely acts as something that inspires the student community uh, furthers their interest and also adds some uh, crucial uh, insights and uh, knowledge 
especially for uh, students who want to study further and uh, ISRO and Indian Institute of Astrophysics saying that uh, this mission uh, which is not the first one to be at L1 point, remember already NASA and ESA has had one uh, in the mid 90s, uh, but ISRO and uh, scientists involved in this project saying that uh, the ISRO mission, Aditya L1 mission is far more superior to that and the amount of data that will come in uh, is something that the whole scientific community is eagerly waiting for and uh, they are hoping that uh, there will be exciting uh, insights that will come over the next five years that will also inspire the student community. Absolutely, Harish. Thank you for bringing us all those details. And definitely, it is quite an exciting mission for sure, as it uh, aims to bring in so much information about the uh, about the sun, which is basically the major, uh, the most important star of the solar system, as we have been. Seeing. And all eyes are headed towards all the images that are going to come in from this particular mission as we as our reporter also mentioned that after the Chandrayaan 3 images have emerged this is the next th big thing for us this is the these are these images that the scientific communities not only the scientific communities even the student communities are waiting to look at and right now let like we were getting into a deeper dive about the mission itself let's have a look at why explore the sun in the first place there are a couple of reasons that we are looking at as to the aims as to why we are studying the sun the first one being the study of the solar winds and their origin this is the first reason uh, wherein we get to study the solar winds and their origin because remember the solar weather affects the entire solar system greatly second is the impact on earth's climate pattern so this particular study will also bring us details about how the solar weather has an impact on earth's climate pattern Number three is understanding weather in space. That is one of the crucial crucial points that we were speaking of, the solar weather and its impact of weather in space. The fourth point is wherein we move on to providing insights into the galaxy. After all, we are studying the most important star, so it will provide a lot of insights into the galaxy. And a lot more information will be coming in about this particular uh, with this particular mission bringing us a lot more information about the sun and its impact on the rest of the galaxy and with that let's slip into a few reactions that we have uh, on this particular story a lot is expected from this mission let's hear from a few people on this particular mission today the countdown for uh, PSLVC 57 Aditya L1 mission is starting and tomorrow noon time we will have the launch that's at 11.50 then it will take almost an hour for the satellite to reach the required location and inject uh, so the Aditya L1 satellite is for studying our sun and uh, it will take 100, another 125 days 125 days to travel from earth to reach the point where the satellite will look at sun called L1 point. So I came here to pray to Changalamba Rameshwari for getting us the strength for making this launch again. Very important launch, successful. Professor Jagdesh Singh with me and you have worked for more than two decades with the beginning of Aditya, the sun mission itself. Yes. Was it a mission impossible? Uh, it now making, it, making it possible now? Uh, it was a dream in, to begin with. But uh, it has become possible because of the hard work done by the team. And Professor Raghavinda Prashad led the team. And he continuously worked on that project. And uh, beginning, to begin with itself, uh, I have to work hard to convince the management that this project is important. Talking about a project, just one week after Chandrayaan 3 hmm. has landed on the moon, now we are reaching for the sun uh, with Aditya. Yeah. But if I can ask you, what do we expect in terms of understanding this for the common person or anybody? I, I understand scientifically, you want to understand how the sun works, the, even the work that is done by Indian Institute of Astrophysics, is, the payload is one of the most important one on this mission. But for the common man, as we would like to connect with people, what would they get to understand or know from this? Uh, the, connect, you see one thing, it is, is one thing is general public. Hmm. Another thing is student community. Let's yes, do the general yeah. public first. What do uh, they gain from this? Uh, so you are talking only about general public. Hmm. 
Yes. I am talking about students. Also. We'll get to the students because you have trained so many of them. But uh, you are making a very interesting observation uh, student, about mobile uh, not technology. Students, student, okay, and that students. I am talking about the school students. Yes. And they are eager to know what scientific is, temp, increasing scientific, uh, scientific temper. Uh, scientific temper. They want to know what is the nature. Everybody on the earth is counting on technology just to have electricity in their homes and businesses, to have communications like you and I are talking to each other now, even to have, you know, navigation for your car and all, all the rest of it. We are counting on uh, a really complicated, interconnected, global electric and data system. And so the electromagnetic energy that comes from the sun is both uh, a benefit to that, but also a huge threat to that. And so putting a, a new sensor in between us and the sun, that it is looking specifically at how the sun sends out these big damaging uh, ejections of, of, uh, of high energy particles. It's it's really useful information, not just for ISRO and, and not just for obviously the Indian space uh, program, but it's something that is sort of vital space weather for the world. Now here's a special report explaining the objectives and the aims of Aditya L1 mission. Take a look as we continue with the countdown for the mission. After conquering the moon with Chandrayaan-3, ISRO is setting its sights on the sun. ISRO will launch the PSLV C-57 for the Aditya L-1 mission on the 2nd of September at 11.50 a.m. from Sriharikota in Andhra Pradesh. The Aditya L-1 will be India's first ever mission to study the sun. There are many more missions we should do. It's not limited to moon. We need to go to Mars, we need to go to Venus, we need to understand other planets. Sometimes go out of the, our Earth, uh, solar system also to other exosolar planets. So all these are needed. We should do all of this. These are, these are first stepping stones of achieving that. In, for our generation, this is a step. Then for next generation, there will be many bigger steps. The name Aditya comes from the Hindi word for the sun. The spacecraft aims to study solar winds which can cause disturbance on Earth and are commonly seen as auroras. Recently, the European Space Agency had detected many small jets of charged particles expelled intermittently from the corona, which is the sun's outer atmosphere. This could help shed some light on the origins of solar wind. In the long run, data from this mission could help better understand the sun's impact on the Earth's climate patterns. And this in turn can have a profound impact on our planet's environment and technology. India's heavy-duty launch vehicle, the PSLV, will launch the Aditya L1. The spacecraft will travel 1.5 million kilometers in about four months to study the sun's atmosphere. Aditya L1 will go to something called a Lagrange point, which is where objects stay put because of balancing gravitational forces and thereby reduce fuel consumption for the aircraft. The spacecraft will be put in orbit around the L1 point from where it will be able to observe the sun without any obstructions. No, actually, that is a study project. I think they are going to study at a distance of 15 lakh kilometers. It is going closer to sun. And they are trying to understand the core. And It's a good project. See, in ISRO, we have no dearth of knowledge or intelligence or anything. In 2018, NASA's Parker Solar Probe came closer to the Sun than any other previous spacecraft. It went right through the Sun's outer layer and endured extremely high temperatures exceeding 1000 degrees Celsius. But the Parker Solar Probe continued to function without any issues. On the contrary, the Aditya L1 spacecraft will be positioned much farther from the Sun than NASA's Parker Solar Probe. It will not encounter such intense heat. The 
The Aditya L1 spacecraft will transport seven instruments to study the Sun's outer layers, such as the photosphere, chromosphere and outermost regions. These instruments will include detectors for electromagnetic and particle activities, as well as to measure magnetic field. Four of these payloads will be used to look straight into the Sun, while the rest will study particles and fields at the L1 point. So why is studying the Sun so critical? That's because solar weather and environment affect the weather of the entire solar system. Variations in this weather can change the orbits of satellites or shorten their lives. They can interfere with or damage electronics on board and even cause power blackouts and other disturbances back on Earth. So knowledge of solar events is key to understanding space weather. The Sun's extreme heat and magnetic behaviour can give us insight into our galaxy and far beyond.